<laughs> Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about Season 3, Episode 15, titled Duty and Honor, or also known as The Savage. I don't know why they changed the name, and everywhere I read, no one knows why they changed the name. So, But it was originally titled The Savage, but then it decided before publishing that they changed the name to Duty and Honor. Interesting. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I don't know, know. <laughs> and how, those, how those have to do with each other. <laughs> it originally premiered on February 6, 1987. All right, John, we actually have a really deep music segment. Three really good bands and one of them a really big name, too. What do you got for us this week? So let me start off. We get Anything by the Damned. And if you remember, this is the Captain Sensible and Rat Scabies band we spoke about a little while back. I would love to talk more about a man named Rat Scabies, but he will return again this season, episode 22 in Viking Bikers from Hell. So I think (laughs) I'm going to wait and we're going to talk more about Captain Sensible and Rat Scabies then. (laughs) Perfect. So perfect. That brings us to Blood and Roses by the Smithereens. They were an American rock band from uh, uh, Carteret, New Jersey, formed in 1980. Uh, Known for, basically they were known for modest hits in the late 80s. This song was used on the soundtrack for the movie Dane Close as well. They actually got quite a bit of rotation on MTV at the time. But let's talk a little bit about the actual members of the band. So we have... Pat D- Denisio on vocals, who was also in the 1992 movie Singles. He also made a guest appearance on Space Ghost Coast to Coast 1996 and wrote a couple books, including Confessions of a Rockstar in 2009. Even more interesting, in the year 2000, he ran for the New Jersey seat on the U.S. Senate. He came in fourth in votes, but during the campaign it was chronicled in a documentary called Mr. Smithering Goes to Washington. <laughs> I have a hard time imagining him run, running for office thinking he had a chance seeing their haircuts <laughs> that they had for their band in the music video I watched. The, also in the band we have Jim Babjack who, on guitar. Babjack has contributed to movies such as... I, I mean, he's basically... Other than being in the band, he com- he was a music composer for TV and movies as well. So he has contributed music, I-, I guess sort of in the sense that Jan Hammer contributes is a composer, that style. Babjack contributed music to movies Bull Durham, Backdraft, Encino Man, Time Cop, Romy and Michelle's High School Wedding, Boys Don't Cry, Golden Kumar, and the list goes on and on. So uh, dude all, was that is, busy. That is a great list, except for Encino Man. Pauly Shore movies should disappear from the face of the earth forever. Hey. <laughs> you like how I threw that one in? Biodome, <laughs> son-in-law, you got no sense of humor. <laughs> Pauly Shore movies should disappear from the face of the earth. <laughs> yeah, <he's> so, not funny. <laughs> So, Bad Jack has also contributed to soap operas, Passions, and The Guiding Light, a myriad of late night shows, including SNL, Conan, Late Night with Jay Leno, The Arsenio Hall Show, and even The Dennis Miller Show. So, like, did not distribute good shows, bad shows. Dennis Miller, I'm looking at you. <laughs> when he was not performing, he had a day job at a bank. On top of contributing music to all those things, he also worked a day job as a manager at a bank. Being a rock star pays decent. Uh, con- <laughs> being a composer pays not so well. <laughs> we also have Mike Massaros on bass, and he's a career musician. Dennis Deacon on drums, and Dennis is a fill-in DJ on WFMU in New Jersey. He was also in that episode of Space Ghost, and he's still rocking, playing the drums. We're going to move on to our last band, and probably the biggest band of the episode, Jefferson Airplane, with their song White Rabbit. Formed in 1965 in San Francisco, they were kind of famous for that kind of hippie kind of sound. Played early with a lot of musicians like Jerry Garcia. The Jefferson Airplane started in 65 when Martin Bailey, an old pizza parlor on Fillmore Street, and turned it into a music club. And they began recruiting 
band members, and lots of band members. Throughout their journey, there would be a total of 14 of them. Their biggest hits were the songs White Rabbit and Somebody to Love. Let's get a little bit. So we're going to work through a little bit of a history here. In November 65, they signed with RCA Victor, getting a then unheard of advance of $25,000. Later in 65, Grace Slick would replace Sydney Anderson on vocals after Sydney Anderson would leave after giving birth to her daughter in 66. And Grace Slick, dude, she was a rock star. Boy, was she a rock star. So first of all, Slicks uh, was actually in a band that was opening up for Jefferson Airplane at the time. Oh, the Great Society. And she actually wrote the song White Rabbit while she was in the Great Society. And then her brother-in-law, Loud Darby, helped her write Somebody to Love. I mean, their two biggest hits were written, and both were written while they were in the band, the Great Society. I also like that they got an advance of an unheard of $25,000. That sounds like just enough money to plan, to plan the biggest heist of David Bowie equipment ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So they actually recorded the song White Rabbit with the Great Society, produced by Sylvester Stewart, who would eventually become Sly Stone. Damn. So it reportedly wow. took 50 takes to achieve his, to live up to his satisfaction. Their biggest hit comes from this other band, produced by this hugely famous guy, and Slick was bought out of her contract with the Great Society for $750. <laughs> not much whoops so, <laughs> yes yes so after she was bought out of her contract the great society broke up in late 66 as we continue on in 68 their ego started to get big they started to get into psychedelic rock but i mean they were killing it the whole time every album that they released was in the uh top 50 in 68 is when their ego started to get a little bit of the best of them they went on the smother brothers comedy hour and things got a little little heated uh, when Grace Slick appeared in blackface and gave the Black Panther salute after their performance. Wow. She said afterwards that she said afterwards that she just wanted to wear all the makeup in the dressing room and wasn't intending on being in blackface. But yeah, come on, guys. Wow. So then, in 1969, while Slick was recovering from uh, throat surgery, several band members created the band Hot Tuna which will be important in a minute. Also, I love the name of a band, Hot um, <laughs> So once Slick would cover, she would go on to the Dick Cavett show where they would drop the F-bomb. And actually, all throughout 69, the album they let go, which was full of F and MFers. <laughs> so they actually started to take heat some of the contents for some of their content and some of the lyrics. At the same time, in 1970, uh, Hot Tuna actually started to become popular. Later in 70, Slick began a relationship with band member Paul Katner, and in 71, they had their daughter, China Wing Katner. This is when Marty Balin, who uh, uh, initially was the founders of the band, would start to step away from the band. He gets sober, he got really into yoga, <laughs> and, you know, and he, he wanted to go a different way musically. Grace Slick, she didn't slow down at all. Even though she just had a kid, in May of 71, she was injured in a near-fatal car crash while drag racing with fellow bandmate Kokonen through a tunnel near the Golden Gate Bridge at over 100 miles an hour <laughs> where when oh she would God. spin out of control and slam into a wall. Wow. Things would continue to get heavier with escalating cocaine use and Slick's alcoholism starting to cause problems. Problems, and eventually in 72 they'd release their final album long john silver at that point the band would split and several of the band members would continue on in their band hot tuna which was actually doing kind of good at the time believe it or not a band called hot tuna was popular <laughs> <laughs> in the 70s but that would not stop at that point they would change their name to jefferson starship in 1973 rca terminated the band and salaries and basically their contract forcing one of the newer members to actually drop an employment so that he could make his house payment <laughs> so <laughs> jefferson starship would start promptly in uh, 1974 and they would rock on until the uh, 1985 and then eventually return in the 90s with Kentner led revival but during Starship they actually had several hits during that time from 74 to 85 their two biggest hits being fooled around and fell in love 
and we built this city. Obviously, two very different ends of the spectrum, and immediately I think of Guardians of the Galaxy 2 with Fool Around and Fall in Love, because that song is in it, you know, and it's all poppy. And then, as soon as I see we built this city, the first thing I think of is The Simpsons with Homer on Spring Break. <laughs> singing, we built this city for rock and roll. So, so, so I... In This Week in Vice, I've talked about Starship and We Built This City. And I, I bagged on them pretty hard then. And you would think this would be my, my opportunity to say, because I'm going to have to mention them again, because they're going to have another n- number one hit with Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now in 1987. You would think i say, you know, on This Week in Vice, I was probably a little hard on them, you know. But fuck those guys. I really <laughs> don't like you? Starship. <laughs> I don't like Jefferson Starship. Jefferson Airplane is good. What they turned into is garbage. And I really, really hate Starship. So if you thought I was going to come back around and be like, I was probably a little hard on them. No, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Starship, the Katner led, still touring. So if you want to go see, the, see them, obviously. I'm going to go tell me sucks in person. To. Go to a fair. Yes. They're at some fair, county fair, <laughs> carnival. They're there. By the way, Grace Slick. Just, she's a hero. I mean, God, she was so rock and roll. I mean, in <laughs> drag racing, in car crashes, and cocaine, and Jesus. <laughs> At least someone does something cool in the band that eventually becomes Starship lame asses. <laughs> well, see, <laughs> well, music took a turn, but not from the person you were probably expecting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye, pal. Fool around and fell in love.